me, the kitchen is the most important room in the house. It's the heartbeat of a family home and getting it placed in the house right is fundamental to the rest of the house working. So before I even start thinking about the kitchen, I try to pull back and consider where it sits in the layout of the building. Historically, kitchens have been squirreled away, quite literally, in back of house in a dark, small corner. Whereas the way we live now, spending most of our time in our kitchens, it sort of deserves to be centre stage. So quite often in my projects, I put the kitchen into the what would have been a principal room in the house, somewhere with higher ceilings, more light, better access out onto the garden, perhaps a view of people coming and going. So you really do feel like the centre of things. Think about how you use your kitchen, how you and your family genuinely live. Do you like having lots of people around you whilst you cook? Do you enjoy having things on display or do you prefer that things are tidied away and you don't have to look at dirty washing up? Do you like to buy in bulk? Do you need to be able to store lots of stuff? Do you have someone in the house who loves a gadget and you need to think about where all those appliances are going to fit. Are there young children who want to be playing by your feet? Are there older teenagers who will be with their friends? All of these questions are vital to informing how you set the kitchen out. If you have a small kitchen, don't be apologetic for it, make it a statement. You can utilize the space by taking the cabinets right the way up to the ceiling. Think about if there's ways you can offload the pressure on that room by moving storage or some of the appliances such as a washing machine or a freezer to another part of the house and make you know make a statement with what you've got perhaps wallpaper the inside of the cupboards or paint them a fun color use paneling or tile to give the space a real energy if you have a really large kitchen perhaps don't fill it completely full of joinery so that it doesn't feel like a showroom. Break it up, you know, use antique pieces for some of the storage, add in some soft seating. You know, if you can have a fireplace so that different zones within the room take on different moods and meanings. If you have an open plan kitchen that's attached to a living room, then it might be interesting to think of ways that you could do it so that the, it doesn't jar between the two spaces, such as instead of using cabinets, using fabric or curtain underneath the worktop, or to really make a statement of the difference between the two spaces, such as having a different flooring material. You could have tile in the kitchen area and then an interesting band where that then meets timber in the living room. Now a larder feels like the ultimate luxury, but really it doesn't need to be any more grand than a big cupboard or even a small cupboard. But this gives you a chance to take pressure off space and also dial down the cost of the kitchen. A larder is a good place to use less expensive joinery than you might use for the kitchen um, or to do things as simply as some painted MDF as a worktop with shelves underneath and above and you know a curtain pulled across underneath the worktop to hide all your detritus behind. I like to try and have a bit of fun with a larder. Um, I often paint it quite a bold colour, either something very dark and handsome or something just blatantly ridiculous like bright pink. <laughs> Lighting is important, but um, I still try and put it on a dimmer switch so that it doesn't feel like too much of a miserable afterthought. You know, a larder 
or scullery is somewhere that you're going to be popping into pretty regularly. For my own house, I have the freezer and the microwave in there, as well as all um, the horrible appliances that my husband uses for his fancy cooking or thinks that he does but never actually gets round to. So yeah, somewhere that's going to make you smile and somewhere that you can hide all the mess that would otherwise fall out on your head when you opened a cupboard in the kitchen. I don't think island units are going to be leaving us anytime soon because they're such a sociable way of cooking. But they don't need to be exactly the same as all the other joinery in the kitchen. It could be a freestanding piece of furniture, an antique piece or a large table. We've done it in the past where we've bought an old antique table and actually jacked up the legs so it can be at the same height as the worktop around it. Using an island unit can be quite a clever way of fitting a kitchen into a room in a historic building that wasn't pre originally intended as a kitchen because sometimes people can struggle to get listed building consent to put a kitchen into those rooms. But if you have everything in the island, then you can leave the outside of the room completely intact. The difference between a peninsula unit and an island is that a peninsula unit is attached to the wall at one side. So in a space that there isn't room to fit an island, a peninsula unit can work quite well. Or if you're a cook that wants to keep everyone else at bay, the peninsula unit can work quite well at dividing two spaces. Or if it's a space where you have a living room on one side and you want the kitchen to feel more contained on the other side of that. I think it can be nice to have a change in tempo from the fitted kitchen elements to the island. And by that I mean maybe changing the paint colour or changing the worktop. Some people really like to have the cooker and the sink in the island so that when they're working at those places they can see everything going on around them. For me personally, I'd rather have the sink and the cooker against the wall so that the island feels completely clear and it feels more like a table. And if you do that, then, you know, a worktop, like a wooden worktop, is more forgiving where, and you can leave the stone to around the sink area. Uh -huh.